Apologies, everyone. Apologies, sincere apologies. I was not able. Uh, my system got crashed at that time. I do not know why, and I was not able to continue. I have reshared the link with each one of you. If you have any friends who have joined the session earlier but now is not able to attend the session, please ask him or her to attend the session. I have shared the link in the WhatsApp group. You can share the link with your friends as well. Thank you so much for understanding. Let's move forward. Okay, so as we were discussing, if you would have been given a target to design a vehicle, how will you start doing it? So please remember this one thing. If I say you have to design any kind of vehicle, just, just forget about Formula Student type of vehicle. If you would have been given a target to design any kind of vehicle in the world, you need to identify different systems on the basis of which the vehicle is needed to be developed. Okay. We need to develop the exact logical order on which you are going to design your vehicle. So I have identified or you will find out there are five identifications of a vehicle. There are five different systems which integrate together to form a vehicle. Hmm. The first is the chassis frame. Second is the steering system. Now there is no specific order as I am stating these names. You can come up with any particular order. Okay, I am just writing down these names. Third is the uh, suspension system. Then you will find out your transmission system and the braking system. Transmission system and the braking system. So there are five different departments. When we integrate these departments together, when we integrate these systems together, we got a complete vehicle. So please remember this one thing. Vehicle itself is not a dedicated entity. Vehicle is the integrated entity. Any kind of vehicle is the integration of these five subsystems. Any kind of vehicle that you look up into the world will be the integration of these five subsystems. Please remember this one thing. There is no vehicle possible which does not have any one, any one of these systems, which does not have any one of these systems. It is mandatory to have all these five systems integrated in the vehicle. Please remember this one point. Chassis frame, steering system, suspension system, transmission system and braking system. Now, I know someone, uh, some, of, uh, some of you must be coming up with this doubt and question that I have seen many of the vehicle which does not have the suspension system, then how this statement is correct. My dear friends, please remember this one thing. In the last session, I have explained to you about the suspension system. If you do not find the shockers, if you do not find the springs in your vehicle, it does not mean that it does not have the suspension system. Your tires, your chassis spring structure, both of them are also going to act as the suspension system for your vehicle. We have looked up into the basic definitions of each of these subsystems in the last session. So please refer to that and you will get the complete understanding of what do we actually mean by suspension system, steering system, chassis frame, transmission and uh, braking. Okay. Now, over that, when you start designing a vehicle, you need to identify there are two classifications of each of these subsystems as well. There are two classifications. The first classification is the characteristic principle, the characteristic parameters the, on the basis of which the vehicle is needed to be designed. Second is the performance parameters or the performance index or the performance principle over which the vehicle is needed to be designed. So say for example, characteristic index. In the characteristic index, we uh, we contribute, we look up into the contribution of the system whose dimensions, basic properties are not going to be changed at any condition. Say for example, I have developed a vehicle. Hmm. I have developed a formula student vehicle. Now, I am driving this vehicle over an uphill or I am taking this vehicle over a downhill. I am moving this vehicle on a racing track or I am moving this vehicle on a bumpy track. No matter where I am moving this, this vehicle, the properties of my vehicle will not change. The speed, now talk about the speed. The speed can change. Uh, say for example, there are only two people seated in my vehicle, the speed is going to be different. If there are 10 people seated in my vehicle, the speed is going to be lower down. If I am moving my vehicle on a downhill, the speed is going to be greater. If I am moving my vehicle over uphill, the speed is going to be lesser. Right? So speed is not the characteristic index. But if I talk about the overall length, width, height, wheelbase and track width of the vehicle, these are regarded as the characteristic index, characteristic parameters of the vehicle that remains unchanged unchanged irrespective of any kind of road where you are driving a vehicle these particular values are not going to change at the same contrast if i talk about the velocity if i talk about acceleration if i talk about payload capacity 
if i talk about towing capacity if i talk about uh, say for example turning radius of my vehicle deceleration of my vehicle uh, the suspension travel of my vehicle my dear friends you will find out each of these values will change in respect to the track where you are moving your vehicle each of these values are subjected to some changes right please understand this particular thing but if i talk about the characteristic index there is something that will remain unchanged okay similarly if i talk about the length wheel uh, length weight height wheelbase track width uh, what particular system in your vehicle decide these factors the primary boundary line hmm. the peripheral dimensions of your vehicle are defined basically by the chassis frame structure your chassis frame defines these things okay i have explained to you about the difference between chassis frame chassis in the previous session so please go to the last week sessions uh, the fs chassis system design essentials you will find out the complete difference between each of these subsystems as well if i talk about the performance index you will find out performance index contributes certain systems is being developed by four subsystems the steering system okay see turning radius the steering system defines the turning radius your transmission system hmm okay velocity acceleration payload capacity towing capacity each of these subsystems are defined by your trans each of these parameters are defined by transmission system okay then suspension system see suspension travel is defined by suspension system deceleration is defined by braking system and each of these parameters are susceptible to certain changes each of these parameters are susceptible to changes but if i talk about the above the side with mentioned this particular mentioned parameter index you will find out it is not susceptible to any kind of change my dear friends it is not susceptible to any kind of change okay so let's move forward you understood this particular con context so now you need to design the vehicle you need to design the chassis frame structure i need to cover up the previously left portion of the chassis frame that's why i am taking this particular topic now i won't be taking much of the time i will be just completing chassis and then we will be directly moving up with the steering system design essentials to design any particular system no matter what you want to design you need to start from somewhere you need to have the reference okay say for example if there is someone who is a computer science engineer and if i ask you to design anything from where will you take the reference you will be saying that i will be taking the reference from the paper model you would be making the paper model and then you will start working on it and if you are a mechanical design engineer again you need to make the reference from where will you take the reference you will be making the paper model so if similarly if you would have been given a target to design a complete vehicle if you would have been given a target to design a race car racing car you need to make a dummy model hmm. so now we have identified the systems in our vehicle okay now we need to start working on it to work on it as i have told you vehicle is the integration of these five subsystems or you can consider these subsystems to be the independent systems in the vehicle okay so how will you start working on it how will you uh, take this approach to start designing it hmm. so now how will you do this now you will be having a team so allocate five different departments to all the teams say for example if i am having 25 member team five members of each team will be working on different subsystems now i am not talking about the other managerial roles or many other roles associated with the vehicle ideally i have just distributed the this work to these five 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 members or just say one member is working on steering one member is working on suspension one is working on uh, braking one is working on transmission and one is working on chassis frame five individual departments mandatory departments five different people working on it now when the steering person is going to work on his or her design do not worry about the implication of other systems on your performance criteria on your system's performance criteria it means you do not have to consider that if i am going to design the steering system how will my steering system respond to certain input of the suspension system to certain input of the braking system to certain input of this transmission system or the chassis do not worry about this design it independently say for example you do not know about anything else in the world you just need to design the steering system you just need to design the best possible steering system do it in a way everyone should have to work on to this particular thing and we call it the level 1 of design where each of these systems are independent of the other role okay other subsystems in the vehicle 
So if I'm building my vehicle, if I draw the top view of my vehicle, my dear friends, this is how my vehicle would look like. I can say this forward to rearward direction is regarded as the longitudinal direction. Okay, the sideways direction is regarded as the lateral direction. And the axis that is passing from top to down is regarded as the transverse axis. Okay, so this is the longitudinal axis front to rear. This is the uh, lateral axis sideways and this is the transverse axis going up and down. Okay, we understood this particular thing. So now if you look up into your vehicle, you will be finding out there are certain forces, there are certain movements that are going to govern your vehicle's motion. So any force that is acting from top, sorry, right front to rear or rear to front in the side in any way front to rear or rear to front that force is, force is going to be regarded as the longitudinal force any force that is acting sideways is going to be regarded as the lateral force any force that is getting acting top to down or down to top will be considered as the transverse force will be considered as the transverse force okay so having said this thing also remember this one thing there are certain forces that are going to act between the tire and the road between the tire and the road there are certain forces that will act on the center of gravity of the vehicle there are certain forces that will act on the center of gravity position of the vehicle so please remember these two things as i have said hmm. why i said this thing now when you look up to your vehicle it is not just about the forces that are acting on it it's also about the moments and if I need to categorize all the moments that are going to be generated in my vehicle, I would be saying these moments are going to be generated into three axes. The first axis, my dear friends, is the longitudinal axis. So any moment that is acting along the longitudinal axis, say for example, if I'm moving my vehicle onto a straight road, because of certain bumps, you will find out vehicle is trading right, left, right, left, right, left. And this particular moment that you're seeing right to left, left to right, it is happening along the longitudinal axis. Please remember this one point. It is happening along the longitudinal axis and we call it the rolling moment. We call it this rolling moment, rolling moment. Now, I'm moving my vehicle on a speed highway and suddenly I applied the brakes. As soon as I have applied the brakes, what happened? The weight from the rear axle transferred to the front axle. Hmm. This is what we have seen. I'm moving my vehicle, I'm moving my car, or I'm, I'm just riding my bike. I applied the brake, what happened? I'm going to shift forward. I'm going to shift forward. I'm going to tilt forward. This weight transfer is happening. This weight transfer is occurring along the lateral axis. See, along the, the weight is transferring from the rear axle to the front axle at the time of deceleration. Or the vice versa, I am moving my vehicle forward and it suddenly accelerated it. Very high acceleration. What happened? The weight transferred from the front axle to the rear axle. We tilt it backward, right? The weight transfers from the front axle to the rear axle and uh, at, the, at, at the time of acceleration. We call this particular thing to be the pitching moment pitching moment and pitch occurs along the lateral axis which occurs along the lateral axis i'm moving my vehicle forward hmm. and at the time i thought okay why don't i take a u-turn when i took the u-turn what actually happened i have tilted all my tires in one direction and my vehicle um, rotated along the axis rotated along the vertical axis my vehicle rotated along the vertical axis and that particular moment my dear friends is regarded as the your moment y a w your moment y a w your moment so please look into this particular thing again this particular axis passing from front to rear or rear to front is regarded as the longitudinal axis the axis that is passing from sideways is regarded as the lateral axis top to down is regarded as the transverse axis hmm. the movement acting along the longitudinal axis is regarded as the rolling movement the movement acting along the lateral axis is regarded as the pitching movement the movement acting along the transverse axis or the vertical axis 
एम जे एम जे इज रिगार इज द योर मोमेंट ओके हैविंग सेट दिस थिंग माई डियर फ्रेंड्स प्लीज ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दैट लॉन्गिट्यूडल एक्सेस रोलिंग मोमेंट अकर्स एट द टाइम ऑफ सर्फेस इेगुलरिटीज Surface irregularity of weight transfer from right to left, right to left type of moment. Okay, lateral axis pitching moment occurs because of acceleration or because of deceleration. Hmm, acceleration or deceleration, front to rear or vice versa. Transfers that is during steering. It is during steering. So please remember these points. Please remember all these moments. Now. Look up to this particular thing, my dear friend. When I talk about the lateral axis movement that is needed to be occurred along the lateral axis, it means the force that is causing this particular movement should have to be perpendicular to lateral axis. Should have to be perpendicular to lateral axis. If if I talking about the sideways axis, it means the force either should have to be longitudinal or should have to be vertical. Should have to be vertical. It means. to cause the pitching moment to cause the pitching moment either the longitudinal force will cause the pitch moment or the vertical force will cause the pitching moment in my vehicle hmm. so if i talk about the uh, movement along the longitudinal axis it means the force that is acting perpendicular to the longitudinal axis will cause the rolling moment that is the force along the lateral axis or the force along the transverse axis would be able to cause the moment along the longitudinal axis in my vehicle so when i say surface irregularities it means vertical force vertical force is acting the transverse force is acting hmm or the weight is transferring from side ways from right to left or left to right it means the lateral axis force is acting hmm which is causing the longitudinal moment which is causing the longitudinal moment now similarly if i talk about the moment along the transverse axis the forces that are acting perpendicular to the transverse axis it means the longitudinal force or the lateral force these two forces can cause the steering moment these two forces can cause the transverse moment in my vehicle okay now each of these forces each of these moments that i have just talked about are the implication of certain systems in my vehicle are the implications of certain systems in my vehicle so when i said that when you need to design the chassis frame structure when you need to design the chassis frame structure you need to first develop the level 1 structure of your vehicle level 1 what do i mean by level 1 you need to design the independent system without considering the effect of one system over the other say for example if i need to design the level 1 of chassis frame If I need to design the level one of chassis frame, how will I do this thing? My dear friends, do not go up with a sophisticated technical understanding of designing the vehicle at this particular level. Okay, you have been given a target to design the chassis frame structure of a vehicle. The only thing that you know as of now, if you do not go, if you do not just uh, replicate any research paper or any standard textbook, the only thing that we know as of now is the dimension of my driver. okay similarly you have asked all the team members to work on the level 1 design of steering system braking system transmission system and the suspension system you got all these four systems okay level 1 now when you need to design the level 1 of the steering system braking system transmission suspension i'll explain this thing in the last section i want you to please go through that once you have developed the level 1 of each of these systems systems you need to bring them together you need to bring them together the first rule of designing a chassis frame structure is the minimum space allocation principle minimum space allocation principle where your only intent your only target is to allocate the minimum space to your structure so this is my driver seated in the vehicle this is the steering system this is my tire my brakes tires brakes suspension system bring them as close to each other as possible in the closest possible proximity arrange all the four tires steering system and everything in your vehicle in the closest possible proximity you need to arrange you need to adjust all these items all these systems together my dear friends okay this is all that you need to do do not worry about it it is not possible how could suspension be so close to my chassis frame structure how will i design it don't worry about it 
your only target as of now at this particular stage at the level one stage the first principle the minimum space allocation principle you need to bring them as close to each other as possible okay as close to each other as possible fix them arrange them in the closest possible proximity now level one and we are working on the level one then second after the minimum space allocation first is the minimum space allocation principle second you need to look up into clearances you need to look up into clearances so i have developed this particular vehicle okay now see uh, i need to look up into clearances dynamic clearances or the kinematic clearances not the dynamics my dear friends but kinematic kinematic means i'm not worried about the forces i'm not worried about the movements i'm just seeing when my tire is going to rotate or when my tire is going to turn uh, in the vertical direction when it is going to turn uh, is it going to interfere with my chassis frame structure okay when my vehicle is going to move forward when the suspensions are going to move up and down are they is my chassis frame structure going to intersect is going to interfere with the road or is going to interfere with any other system of my vehicle if it is happening try to provide the clearances try to provide the clearances all the clearances that are required here third my dear friends you need to look up into the rule book clearances constraint in the rule book it has been given that the minimum space that is needed to be provided between the chest and the steering wheel is x y z the minimum um, is clearance between any rotating or the moving part and the driver is this particular value. The minimum uh, clearance between the knee of the driver and the side upper member is X value. Look up into all the clearances provided in the rule book of the event you people are participating in or the standards of for which you are designing or developing a vehicle. Look up into this particular thing. Now, you have got something. You have got a vehicle which can work kinematically. I do not know dynamically it is going to work or not, but yes, I have arranged all the systems together and it can work. If I talk about the level one design of each of these systems now, my dear friends, if I talk about the level one design of a steering system, if I talk about the level one design of suspension system, if I talk about the level one design of transmission system, if I talk about the level one design of braking system, I have explained to you about the basic definition of each of these subsystems in the previous session. If you refer to this particular thing and I ask you to design the steering system, how will you do it? In the level one, you need to just develop the kinematic model. You just need to develop the kinematic model or I can say you just need to develop the geometric or the mathematical model. You do not need to worry about how much load will my steering be able to take, how much load will my suspension system be able to take, how much load will my transmission system be able to take. Do not worry about this. See in the level one uh, is chassis frame design. Have I talked about this thing? No. We are just worried about it. If you need to develop a vehicle, it should be able to move. First, we have to develop the mechanism. The functioning principle is needed to be developed first. So, as for example, I am having the system with the help of which I can turn my tires. I am having the system with the help of which my tires can move up and down. I am having the system with the help of which I can move it forward. I am having the system with the help of which I can decelerate the entire system. Do not worry about the force, just develop the mechanism. Say, for example, for the suspension system, you need to develop a multi bar linkage mechanism. For the steering system, probably uh, you will be working on four bar linkage mechanism system. Hmm. Same goes for the other departments as well. You just need to develop the mechanism. Okay, just the mechanism. Say, for example, you do not know what tire size are you going to use. You do not know uh, how big your steering is going to be. So, what is the target? Is to design it as small as possible. So, you are just developing a system with the help of which, if required, you can actuate the tires hmm. and you can turn them. Just develop this particular mechanism, just a line mechanism just a line mechanism same goes for the suspension team same goes for the braking team for everyone this is same okay now you need to bring them all together and arrange them arrange them in a way that you are going to consider you are going to take the least possible space least space is needed to be allotted is needed to be allocated after doing so this is the first step of which i just this design after doing so you need to look up into weight distribution weight distribution how much weight is at the front how much weight is at the rear you need to look up into this particular thing and after that you need to look up into weight transfer 
Okay, now before we move to the weight transfer, that is level three, this is level two, and I've already level two, and I've already explained the level one design. Okay, that is just the that is just the kinematic model. Now, once you've developed the kinematic model, you need to look up into the level two design of each of the system. Level two design of each of the systems. What is the level two design of each of the system? The steering system. Okay. Now I have developed the steering system, but at that time when my vehicle is moving forward, it is not just the steering system that is activated because of the torque that is provided by my engine. Maybe the torque is insufficient. Say, so for example, I'm moving my vehicle forward. I start my engine. I can move my vehicle forward. But you must have noticed this thing that when your steering is already turned. When your tires are already turned into certain direction, already cornered into certain direction, and you start your vehicle, you need to provide some extra torque to move it forward. To move it forward, you need to provide some extra torque. Maybe the kind of engine that you are using in your vehicle is not able to provide this particular extra torque. It means you need to change the design of your steering system, or maybe with the help of the steering, the, you have already fixed the steering. You need to change the transmission system. It's possible. Now. There are four systems that are susceptible to changes at first: the steering, suspension, transmission, and braking. Okay. Now, if I iterate the steering design, if I iterate the steering design on the basis of suspension system, I have iterated it. Then the new model that I have got is regarded as a level two transient steering system. Now, furthermore, this particular system is going to be iterated with level one design of transmission system. Now, I have designed this transmission system in a way that the steering system is needed to be changed. It's not able to cope up with the kind of transmission system, and I changed my steering system again. Then the new model is going to become is going to be regarded as a level two. Double transient steering system. Then I am going to consider the effect of braking system on it. Level one of braking system. Then the new model that I will be getting will be regarded as the level two of my steering system. What I have done in this particular process, while going up with the level two, I am considering the effect of one system over my steering system, one system over the other. Effect of suspension over the steering. I I have rechanged it, iterated it. Then the iterated model is needed to be further iterated on the basis of transmission system, further iterated on the basis of uh, braking system. Okay, braking system. Sorry, and then I will be getting a model which is going to be regarded as a level two. What I have done in level two, my steering system is only iterated on the basis of one system at a time. My system got iterated only on the basis of one system at a time. Okay, please remember this one particular point. now if i consider the level 2 of steering system is already established now now if i consider the effect of suspension and transmission braking together together then the new model is going to be considered as the level 3 of steering system and it goes for individual system for all the systems for all the systems you need to make these changes Now here in the level three, my dear friends, you will find out suspension system has got the effect in transverse direction. Transmission and braking has got the effect in longitudinal direction, while the steering has got the effect in lateral direction. That's why I explained you the directions earlier. Lateral direction, and on the basis of this, you are going to iterate the design of each of these systems. And when you start designing it, when you got the level two of a steering system, you will be at the same time simultaneously changing your chassis frame design. You got the level two of braking system, simultaneously you will be changing the chassis frame design. You got it for the uh, for any other system, you will be changing your chassis frame design at the same time. Okay, I hope I have given you a bit of clarity. My dear friends, please remember this one thing: if you would have been given a target to design any kind of vehicle in the world, the most important, the crucial thing that you people need to remember is your complete vehicle dynamics. Mostly depend on two factors. First factor is the weight transfer. 
anybody who plans of designing a vehicle always thinks of reducing the weight transfer as much as possible everyone always intend to uh, have the least possible weight transfer okay second is the traction availability this is the most important term my dear friends anybody in the world has been if has been given a target to design a vehicle the basic intent is to increase the traction as much as possible by as high value as possible so the basic everything that is happening in your vehicle happens because of the weight transfer happens because of the traction availability you need to reduce the traction weight transfer and you need to increase the traction in your vehicle this is a basic principle on the basis of which the complete dynamics of the vehicle uh, can be vehicle design and development can be understood okay the basic formula on the basis of which the chassis frame structure is needed to be designed is to design it as simple as possible and to design it as light as possible please refer to the last lecture on chassis frame design essentials i have explained this particular thing you need to design it as simple as possible you need to design it as light as possible please remember this particular principle someone who has designed the bugatti veyron someone who has designed the chassis frame structure of a lamborghini they have never thought of designing the difficult vehicle but to achieve their targeted values the targeted value of steering the targeted value of transmission the targeted value of braking the targeted value of suspension this is the simplest possible design that they could make okay so you need to design it as simple as possible you need to design it as light as possible light as possible so how will you do that so if i need to mathematically prove this thing you need to understand the vehicle dynamics i will be separately starting the series on vehicle dynamics uh, from i believe from 22nd yes from tomorrow onwards i will be starting a definite series a different series on vehicle dynamics you people can attend that particular session to understand how the vehicle dynamics is needed to be approached uh, considering the vehicle design and development processes okay so if i need to collectively measurably say this thing how the chassis frame structure is needed to be designed you can just remember two points first you need to have as high bending stiffness as possible and you need to have as high value of torsional stiffness as possible okay now there are two rules first rule you need to design it as simple as possible you need to design it as light as possible now to make it simple to make it light you also need to unnecessarily you cannot increase the dimension you need to design it as small as possible as small as possible length width and height it should have to be as less as possible please remember this one point hmm? the vehicle should have to be as simple as possible as small as possible measurably engineeringly if i have to say i will be saying i need to design it in a way that i will be having the maximum value of bending stiffness and i will be having the maximum value of torsional stiffness to have high value of bending stiffness or uh, you can say you can simply say bending stiffness bending equation is m by i is equals to sigma by y is equals to e into 1 by r hmm. this is i see this is i if i need to increase the bending stiffness i need to have very high value of bending stiffness what is bending stiffness it is ei okay bending resistance okay if i talk about the torsional stiffness i will be saying t by j tau by r is equal to g theta by l if i need to increase the torsional stiffness what do i mean by this thing i am saying gj gj should have to be as high as possible will be theta by l okay it should have to be as high as possible now it means the area moment of inertia should have to be high and the polar moment of inertia that is j should have to be high and to increase the polar moment of inertia to increase the area moment of inertia i need to increase the distance of neutral axis from the farthest possible element of my vehicle with a reaction forces act you will find out there are only four four parts on which the reaction force is acting your tires 
the tau rm reaction will be now so if i talk about the area moment of inertia it means see 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 this particular distance should have to be as high as possible this particular distance should have to be as high as possible this particular distance should have to be as high as possible this tire center contact patch to tire center contact patch with regard is the track width front track width rear track width tire center contact patch for the front tire center contact patch for the rear is regarded as the wheel base so to increase the area moment of inertia your track width and wheel base should have to be as high as possible Similarly, if I talk about the polar moment of inertia, this part of the diagonal C distance should have to be as high as possible. This diagonal distance should have to be as high as possible. Again, to increase this particular length, your track width and wheel width should have to be as high as possible. Engineeringly, I have just told you that you need to have very high value of I and very high value of J, for which you need to have high value of wheel base. You need to have high value of track width but just before that i made a contrary statement where i said that a vehicle should have to be as small as possible so what do i mean by that my dear friends please remember this one thing your vehicle is always a compromise of one system over the other of one philosophy of over the other please remember this one thing one postulate over the other postulate is the compromise of one postulate over the other postulate you can also say a vehicle is like a compromise between the ride quality and handling handling means the performance quality means the comfort it's a compromise the vehicle is the complete entity integrated entity and whenever we talk about the integrated entity it means we are making certain compromises okay so i have said that you need to design it as small as possible considering that you will be having the sufficient value of i and j i and j and i and j is also about e i and g j this value should have to be high For having high value of E, having high value of J, you will be using the high strength material. But this is not sufficient. You need to also have the higher cross section of the entire system. Higher cross section of the entire system. For the teams which are participating in the formula type of event, say for example, if you are participating in SA India Supra, SA International Supra, if you are participating in Formula Bharat, Formula Imperial, or any other kind of event, my dear friend, you need to please remember this one thing, your chassis frame structures, bending stiffness and torsional stiffness should have to be high. For that, you need to use the high strength material. And you also need to use the material which is having high stiffness. It means to have the high stiffness, you need to use a material having the higher cross section. I am not saying that you need to increase the weight. I am saying you need to increase the cross section to increase this particular parameter to enhance this particular parametrical property of your vehicle. Hmm. So say for example, if you have got a choice of using 25.4 by X mm or 29.2 into Y mm in a way that one meter length of each of these items weight is absolutely similar. W1 is equal to W2. Which one will you use? I would ask you people to use 29.2 by 0.2 by Y mm. If the weight of we, the both of these systems are same, because this particular cross section will be having higher cross section, is having sorry higher cross section, further it will be having higher bending stiffness and torsional stiffness. So this is the way how you need to design your entire chassis frame structure. I would ask you people to please go to the rule book, find out the basic structure that is given in there. Let me just showcase you the basic structure given in the rule book. See, this is the basic structure. Hmm. Accordingly, according this particular to, to this particular structure, according to all the rules given the rule book, you need to design a vehicle. You need to design a vehicle. If you people have got any question associated uh, with the session that I have taken up till now, you can write down your question in the chat box. So I've got two questions. Sumiran S is saying, Ma'am, could you explain the rolling movements? Sorry, Sumiran, I'm not ma'am, I am sir. Like if you want to call me sir, you can call me bhaiya, you can call me by my name, it's entirely on you. But please do not call me ma'am, please. Okay. Um, rolling movement. Okay. See, this is a top view of my vehicle. The axis that is passing from front to rear or rear to front, this is the axis. I call this axis to be the longitudinal axis. If I am moving my vehicle forward, the weight transfer that is occurring from right to left or left to right. Hmm. Right to left or left to right. Say for example, I am um, right side tire, there is a bump came up. In the right side, the bump came up. What will happen? I will be shifting towards left. Okay. So this is the movement that is occurring along the longitudinal axis. And I call this movement to be the rolling movement. 
Similarly, the axis passing in the sideways is regarded as the lateral axis. Okay. If I apply the brake, the weight transfer from the rear axle to the front axle. The weight transfer from the rear axle to the front axle. Or when I accelerate, the weight transfers from the front axle to the rear axle. And I call it the pitching moment. Okay. Someone asked me to steer my vehicle. And when I steer my vehicle, actually my tires are turning along the vertical axis. And I call it to be the yaw moment. Okay. When I'm moving my vehicle forward, do I want the uh, rolling moment to occur? I just want to move my vehicle forward. But because of surface irregularity, something happened. Something happened. Right? So, can I call it the rolling, sorry, can, is the rolling moment desirable? No. Rolling moment is not desirable. Okay? This is the um, end some product. This is the end product of some other phenomena in my vehicle. I am accelerating my vehicle. Because of acceleration, the weight transfers from the front axle to the rear axle. Have I provided the moment? Have I provided the input for the pitching moment? No. It is a byproduct of my acceleration. I am deceleting my vehicle. The weight transfers from the rear axle to the front axle. So, is this the uh, is this something that I want? No. Pitching moment is the byproduct of the braking input. Okay. But yaw is the desirable moment. I want to turn my wheel as my vehicle is turning. Yaw is the only desirable moment. Out of all the three moments, yaw is the only desirable moment. Krishna is saying, what do you mean by polar moment of inertia? Okay, Krishna. Polar moment of inertia. How would I explain this thing to you? Okay. So, polar moment of inertia causes the torsion, is, is the primary principle behind the torsion in the vehicle. So, say for example, I am having a shaft. If you are carrying a pen, so take your pen, lay it down, have it in your hand, now, if you see, if there is a ripple that is passing through your pen, okay, consider this ripple to be the neutral axis about which you can rotate your pen. Now, you can rotate your pen about your ripple, about the ripple inside your pen, right? About the ripple inside your pen. But what if on one side, I will not rotate it, but on the other side, I will try rotating it. If I do this thing, what will happen? My pen will twist. My pen will twist and it will start twisting along my ripple. It will start twisting along my riffle and I call it the twisting moment. Twisting moment. And this twisting moment is occurring because of the force that I am applying multiplied by the perpendicular distance from this neutral axis. Not just this. This is how it works. But what if I increase this particular dimension? If my pen is very wide, very wide, the diameter of the pen is not 1 inch, say for example, not 10 mm, 20 mm. Say the diameter of my pen is 100 mm. Would I be able to twist it? No. When you increase this particular dimension, twisting becomes difficult. And this particular distance, this particular phenomena is regarded as the twisting, uh, twisting uh, torque or is regarded as the um, uh, torsional, torsion rigidity, torsion of the vehicle. Okay? And this is how you find the polar moment of inertia. The distance, the distance of the outer fiber from the neutral axis about which the outer fiber is rotating this particular cross product is this particular product is regarded as the polar moment of inertia okay flash is saying sir the track within the wheel base diagram is wrong i'm not sure flash is okay see this is front this is rear don't worry this is front and this is rear don't worry about it okay when i said this thing that could be completely opposite as I said earlier. Now, I'm going to redraw this thing just to avoid the confusion. Top view, this is the front, this is the rear. Okay, distance between the tire center contact patch in the sideways to tire center contact patch of the front side tire. Say, for example, this is the right tire, this is the left tire. Center contact patch. See, I am not saying center of the tire. I am saying center contact patch. So, what do I mean by center contact patch? This is my tire. In the side view, this is how my tire will look like. Okay. Now, this is the center of the tire. This is the center of the tire. But the center contact patch, where is the contact patch? This is the contact patch. Right? This center contact patch, front center contact patch, one side to other side center contact patch is regarded as the track weight. And the center contact patch to center contact patch in the front and rear is regarded as the wheelbase. Okay. I can have different track weights in the front and different in the front and the rear. I can have different track weights. 
Okay. So with this, I have finished the chassis frame. Whatever I need to discuss in the chassis frame structure, I have discussed this thing with you now. My dear friend, ARC Global also provide internship come training programs to the students. So if you are a if you are an engineering student or if you are an enthusiast who are interested, who is interested to know more about automobile, to know more about electric vehicles, or who wants uh, who wants to learn about the mechanical design or the simulation processes, you can join our internship program. Every Monday at 8 p.m., we start our internship come training batches at a very minimal cost of 3500 rupees only. Every Monday, a new batch starts. Batches on electric vehicle design, batches on automobile design, batches on CAD, batches on CA. Now, if you join the EV design, in the first week, you will be studying about the electric vehicle fundamentals. In the second week, you will be studying about the vehicle dynamic. Third week, you will be studying about the CAD for EV. Okay. In the fourth week, you will be studying about the CA for EV. If you want, if you join the automobile engineering program, in the first week, you will be studying about the basic, the fundamentals of automobile. Second week, you will be studying about the vehicle dynamic. Third week, you will be studying about the CAD on automobile, general combustion automobile. CA on combustion automobile. If you join the CAD, if you join the CA batches, you will be getting the in-depth understanding of SOLIDWORKS here, in the CAD, ANSYS here, in the CAE. So you can think of joining each of these batches. Every Monday we start a new batch. I will be sharing the link of these batches with each one of you. If you require, just drop me a message on this particular number. And you can join these batches. Okay, let's move forward. Please follow us on Instagram. We are available on Instagram with the name of ARC Global. Our username is underscore ARC Global. Give us a follow on Instagram. We want you people to support us so that we can reach out to more people. I've got 35 people who have joined up this particular session today. I want each one of you to please share this particular session with your friends. Give us a subscribe if you have not subscribed our YouTube channel up to now. Up till now. Every Sunday, I will be coming up with a new live session. Next Sunday, I will be coming up suspension, then transmission, then again transmission, and then braking system. Every Monday, I am going to come up with these kinds of sessions. Sunday. And then from tomorrow onwards, I will be starting a series on uh, vehicle dynamics. There are going to be 10 lectures on vehicle dynamics. Within a month, I will be completing that particular series as well. You will be getting that particular lecture in the recorded format. After that, I will be coming up on a complete series on mechanical engineering, complete mechanical engineering complete electrical engineering, complete electronics engineering, complete automobile engineering, electric vehicle engineering, motor sports engineering are going to be covered up in this particular YouTube channel for free. Okay, in the one year, in the next one year, I've got the plan to cover up these particular four streams of engineering on my YouTube channel. I want you people to please give us a subscribe so that we can reach out to more people. Please share this particular channel with your friends as well. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's move with the steering system design essential. Just give me a moment so that I can drink some water. Is steering system design essential? What do we mean by steering system? I want you people to please write down in the chat box and tell me what do you mean by steering system? What is a steering system for each one of you? I want you people to be a bit interactive so that I could get to know that you people are really listening to me. Write down in the chat box what do you mean by steering system? Sir, have you taken session on suspension previously? Or? No, I will be taking the session on suspension in the next Sunday. On next Sunday, I will be taking that particular session. Please remember this one thing in this particular series. We are just discussing about the stepwise process. We are just discussing about the fundamentals. This is not complete, but at least it will be giving you the foundation. Fundamentals, how you need to start designing it. Okay, what do we mean by steering system? A steering system is a kind of system that provides the directional maneuver ability to the driver. So I'm the driver and the person who is driving my vehicle. If there is any system that provides a directional maneuver ability. Now, I'm not saying anything that is responsible to change the direction. No, my vehicle is moving forward. Someone pushed it in the right side. Someone pushed it in the left side. Can I call it the steering system? No. When I say maneuver ability, it means only I am responsible to maneuver the change in direction of my vehicle. When I say change in direction, it means I am responsible to insist any specific direction to my vehicle or to change it as per my need. 
It means if I will not provide any input, my vehicle will not change the direction. If it has been placed in the forward direction, it will only move forward. If it has been placed in some lateral, in some um, x y direction, it will only move in the x y direction. Please remember this one thing. Say for example, if my vehicle is moving forward, suddenly a bump came up, my vehicle tilted left side. Can I call it the steering system? No. It should not have to happen. It means this is a particular subjugated loss in my steering system, subjugated error in my steering system design. Because of bump, because of any particular thing in my vehicle, my vehicle cannot change the direction. Only I as a driver can initiate the change in direction of my vehicle and that is regard, that is considered as the, that is regarded as the directional maneuver ability. Any system that provides the directional maneuver ability to my driver is regarded as the steering system of a vehicle. What do we generally consider in a steering system? See, uh, if someone talks about the steering system, there are few parameters that we calculate. There are few particular terms that you people need to remember. First is the turning radius. So if this is my vehicle, my vehicle is moving forward and suddenly I thought of changing my direction. So I said, okay, I need to move here in the left side direction. I need to move in the left side direction. Okay. So what I did, I provided some inputs and my vehicle, which were earlier heading in the forward direction, see, in the longitudinal direction, the tires, which were earlier heading towards the longitudinal direction will turn along the vertical axis and will head into this particular direction. Into this particular direction. Okay. It means the longitudinal direction will also change. Okay. This is not furthermore uh, moving here. It is for now moving here. Call it theta 1. Call it theta left. We call it theta right. Theta r. It is being turned into this particular direction. Okay. When it turned into this particular direction, my vehicle is going to take round and round. But there should be certain, see, if it is making this particular donut, if it is making a donut, or if it is just making a turn like this, if it is making a turn like this, my dear friend, there should be a turning radius from the center of my wheel, center, sorry, center of my vehicle, this particular radius about which my vehicle is taking a turn is regarded as the turning radius, is regarded as the turning radius, is regarded as the turning radius. Now you can see here. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so this is my vehicle moving forward. If I just talk about this particular dot, okay, you can see this is how you will be tracing my path. You will be tracing the path of this particular drop. Okay, someone asks, what is the turning radius of this dot? You will think turning radius of this dot is R. If someone asks you what is the turning radius of this circle, you can say the turning radius of this circle here. Sorry, of this vehicle, I'm really sorry, not circle. Of this vehicle here is from the center, it is capital R. Okay, that is fine. But now, my dear friends, you can just simply say this, see this thing, this particular tire is regarded as the inner tire. This particular tire is regarded as the outer tire because it is heading towards the outside boundary of my turn. This is heading towards the outside, inside boundary of my turn. Now, you can see, if I draw the circle for the inner tire, let me just do it with the other color. Okay, and if I do it for the outside tire, this is how it will come. Okay, so what I got, the turning radius of the inside tire here, here is, now if this is R, and say this is the center of the tire, track width by 2. So the inner tire, for inner tire, it is going to be R minus track width by 2. Hmm. For the outer tire, you can see outer tire, it is going to be R plus track width by 2. In any way, you will find out the inner tire's turning radius is lesser in comparison to outer tire. Or you can say distance covered by the inner tire is distance covered by the inner tire is 2 pi and the distance covered by the outer tire is how is it possible? If there are two tires connected with the help of solid shaft, or there are two tires which are just connected with the chassis frame structure, how is it possible that one tire is traveling more and the other tire is traveling less? It is only possible because my shaft is providing equal power, equal RPM to both the tires. Then how is it possible? See, for example, if there is a vehicle where the rear tire is being provided with the power, 
engine is connected with the rear tire and there is a solid shaft that is connecting with the rear tires now you can see the inner tire is supposed to travel 2 pi r minus t by 2 the outer tire is supposed to travel r plus t by 2 how is it possible that the one tire is moving less and the other tire is moving more it is only possible if the one of the tire is having higher velocity and the higher velocity and the other tire is having the lesser rpm is it possible if it will happen then what will what will happen in my vehicle if it is the case then what will happen in my vehicle my shaft will start twisting my shaft will twist right now to avoid this particular scenario just look up here look up here this is the inner tire this is the outer tire both are traveling different distances to happen just to happen just to make this thing happen how will you design your entire steering system geometrically this is the this is the area of concern for us first my dear friends whenever we talk about the steering system never call it a turn never say that the steering helps to provide the turn no always call it corner a steering system makes you corner makes your vehicle corner turning is just one subset of cornering okay when you change the direction you call it corner so there are three ways with the help of which you corner your vehicle first is turning what happens in turning so there are four wheels in my vehicle <coughs> sorry when all the four wheels stay on ground okay all the four tires are staying on ground it means they are making the reaction with the ground they are all are having reaction with the ground okay there is certain traction between them and the ground if all the four wheels stay on ground four wheels are providing reaction are reaction and the inside tire and the outside tire inside tire and the outside tire are turning in the same direction then we call it the turning in all the passenger vehicles you do turn you do not call you, you are coordinating at the end but you call it turning you call it turning in all the four wheels stay on ground and the inside tire sorry inside tire sorry sorry i'm really sorry this is absolutely wrong i provided the input into left side and my vehicle cornered into left side i call it the turning all the four wheels are on ground i provided the left side input my vehicle cornered into left side i call it turning i call it turning now this is my vehicle i make a corner i steered my vehicle all the four wheels are on ground all the four wheels are on ground i provided the left side input but my vehicle is skidded in the right side in the right side that is opposite output we call it drifting input and output opposite we call it drifting in the drifting what happens i am moving my vehicle forward i provide the left side input i apply the brake my vehicle is skidding in the right side direction we call it drifting again in the drifting direction is changing direction is changing so this is the steering input okay and then particularly in the case of formula vehicles racing cars you must have seen this thing that not all four wheels on ground are on ground the front inside and the rear outside front inside and the rear outside tire rises up i provided the left side input my vehicle turned cornered into left side cornered into left side we call it jacking we call it jacking so particularly you will find out whenever we talk about the steering system whenever we talk about the steering system we say that my vehicle is cornering and there are three ways in which you change the direction of the vehicle first is the ideal condition turning second is drifting and third is jacking okay your vehicle if your vehicle is having the differential it means you can have the turning in your vehicle drifting what happens is the drifting tires burn out so it is not recommended turning what happens turning is actually a slow process okay drifting is fast jacking is fast 
but in the drifting tires will burn out hence will reduce your traction reduce traction furthermore makes your vehicle unstable unstable to handle so it is not recommended what is recommended is the jacking jacking is recommended in any kind of vehicle how would you introduce jacking in your vehicle we need to discuss about that first we need to figure out how will i make sure that my inner tire is going to turn more is going to now i'm saying inner tire is going to turn it means turning along the vertical axis i'm not saying turning as a whole for the vehicle i'm saying turning for my tire only hmm? how will i make sure that my inner tire will turn more in comparison to outer tire so this particular principle is regarded as the ackerman principle okay so this is my tire i need to rotate my tire hmm? i need to rotate my tire along the vertical axis along the vertical axis passing through the center of my tire or the center contact patch of the tire i need to rotate my tire along the vertical axis passing through the center contact patch of my tire simple what do you mean by steering system any system that rotates the tire that turns the tire or rotates the tire along the vertical axis passing through the center contact patch of the tire as viewed from the side axis simple or from the front axis that's fine that's absolutely fine okay we call it the principle ackerman principle how you do it before moving up with the ackerman principle let us try to understand how will you define how will you develop your entire steering system how will you develop your entire steering system i'm not going to get into the detail of this particular thing because i directly need to move up with the formula student thing so i will be just taking five minutes more to explain this thing and then in the next 10 minutes we will be explaining the steering system implication associated with the formula student type of vehicle so this is my tire these are my tires front tires i need to rotate them so what i will be doing this my tire is connected with the hub wheel tire hub tire wheel connected with the hub which is further connected with the spindle or is connected with the knuckle 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 is something over which your tire is rotating okay now this particular knuckle my dear friends will be having will be having two holes one in the top one in the rear okay about which i can rotate my tire now see this is the vertical axis this is not absolutely vertical it could also be inclined in this particular direction it can be inclined to this particular direction but this is the axis about which i can rotate my tire vertical along the vertical axis okay this is the point about which i can rotate my tire this particular axis this particular axis as you are looking up here my dear friends is the steering axis if you look up into your bike you can see there is a particular spindle given okay there is a particular path given in the front about which you can rotate your handle if you look up into your vehicle you will find out when you peep inside your tire uh, from the bottom position you can see there is a two hard there are two points on the knuckle the steering is mount sorry your suspension is mounted over it about which your tire is turning about which your tire is turning we call it the steering axis joining of these two points is regarded as the is steering axis about which your tire is turning your tire is turning along the vertical axis okay your tire is yaw in simply say it yaw when i say it yaw we understood the concept that we are talking about the steering system now to steer my vehicle i need to cause a movement along this particular axis i need to cause a movement along this particular cause axis how will i cause a movement along this particular axis so to cause the movement along this particular axis i need to apply the the perpendicular force i need to apply the perpendicular force so how will i do this thing let me just redraw the diagram so this is my tire so this is my tire one tire second tire okay now this tire is connected say for example this is the pivot point about which my tire is subjected to rotate pivot point and this is the axis so i am having this bolt i am having this rod axle connected here now my tire is rotating over a bearing or with any axle and this is this can <coughs> sorry this tire can rotate along this particular axis with the help of the force that i am applying on it so what i will be doing i will be adding on one member here 
one member here. Hmm. So if I uh, hold this member and I push my tire, it will rotate along this particular axis. It will rotate along this particular axis. It is fixed by it. Okay. Now similarly, into the other side, I am having this particular member. On the other side, I am having this particular member. Okay. So simple with my hands, if I push this particular member here, my tire will turn. If I push this member here, my tire will turn. Okay, if I push it here, my tire will turn here. If I push it here, my tire will turn in the opposite direction. This is how the entire thing will work. I hope you are getting this thing. Now, I need to develop a mechanism so that it can happen automatically. So for that, what I will be doing, I am having this particular thing. Now, see here, let me just simplify this entire thing for you. Now, see, this is one bar, one bar hanging from a pivot point. Okay, this is the roof or just say the ground reaction. This is a pivot point. So if I apply the force here, if I apply the force into this particular direction, what happens? This pivot moves here. If I apply the force, this pivot moves here. Okay, so now along this pivot, just consider your tire is connected. Your tire is connected. So if I provide the force here, what will happen? My tire will also rotate. My tire will also turn, right? My tire will also turn. See, my tire is connected here. Okay, this is a fixed connected. So this is one pivot right side left side okay now what i will be doing i'm going to weld this pivot and this pivot point together with the help of a rod together with the help of a rod if i weld them together if i apply any force here nothing will happen because it will become constrained it will become constrained so i'm not going to make it weld i'm going to use a turning pair here Okay, I will be using a turning pair here. So if I push it, what will happen? It will move here. But if I push it here, this will also move here because both are connected together with the help of turning pair. With the help of turning pair. Okay, this is the mechanism, basic mechanism that is needed to be developed. So this is arm one, this one. This is arm two and this is arm three. And this ground reaction is regarded as the arm four. This is regarded as the arm Four and we call it one, two, three, four. We call it a four bar linkage mechanism. Every steering system that you find out is actually a four bar linkage mechanism. For that, what I need to do, I just need to move down, hold this thing, call it the connecting rod because it's connecting the right side and left side tires, right? Connecting rod. I push it left side, I push it right side, my tires are turning. My tires are yawing, right? My tires are turning. But this is not how I want my steering system to work. So what I will be doing? I will be breaking this shaft into two positions. And I will be using a gear. Okay? A gear. Hmm. So let me just redraw this diagram so that it's easy for you to understand. Pivot point 1, pivot point 2, this is the bar hanging from here, this is the bar hanging from here, okay, I am, now again here a pivot point, here is the pivot point, I connect them together with a rod, but this time I am going to connect them together, not with a rod directly, but I will be using a bit of gear between them, okay, I need to push it here, nice, right, so I will be using a gear, I will be using a gear to connect them together. So now here in the gear, I will be using a circular gear as well. So when I rotate this particular circular gear on its position, this gear will move here. This gear will move here. When it moves here, what will happen? My tire will turn because it's directly connected with it. And this particular circle, this particular gear is connected with my steering wheel. This is how the entire steering system is basically designed. This is not absolutely correct, but this is how the foundation of a steering system is needed to be designed is needed to be designed now my dear friends please look here pivot point 2 pivot point 1 ground reaction here now this particular is 90 degree 90 degree from here i moved it by say for example the total distance here is say for example 6 inches or say uh, 60 inches I moved it by 10 inches I moved it by 10 inches is way too much 
Okay, let us say 5 inches and call it 50. If I moved it by 5 inches, then what will happen? It will move here. Now see, it is rotating now, so it will not move straight like this. It will move somewhat here. If it will move here, it will also come to this particular position. Now if I say this length is L1, this length is L2. The one side length is L1, the other side length is L2. L1 is equal to L2 is equal to 10 inches. The connecting rod here is 50 inches. This is a ground reaction. Ground reaction connecting rod both are parallel and equal to each other. Everything is equal and this is a perfect rectangle. I moved it by 50 inch. I moved it by 5 inches. Then this will reach here. This L1 will remain L1, right? It will move here. It is angle theta. It will make angle theta. It will also make angle theta. Now my dear friends, see, this particular distance here is x. It will also move up by x. What is angle theta? I can say angle theta 1, here theta 1, here theta 2, is equal to 10 theta 1 is equal to x. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, say it like this. Say it like this. Angle 10 theta 1 is equal to x upon L1. Similarly, 10 theta 2 is equal to x upon L2 and L1 is equal to L2. That's why the inside angle and outside angle will remain same. So if I make if I make this steering mechanism where the length of both of these arms are equal, both are parallel and both are equal both are parallel to each other then what will happen the inside turning angle and the outside turning angle will always remain same it's not possible that i change the length of one side and the other side is smaller one side is longer i cannot do these things otherwise every time you will find out if l1 is greater than l2 then every time whenever i talk about the left side turn say for example this is left if this value is going to be lesser in comparison to this value okay this is not correct this is not correct right side the angle is lesser left side the angle is more Every time it will happen. Right side corner, again lesser. Left side corner, again lesser for the right side. So it's not correct. So the length should have to be equal. But angle can be changed. What if I say, again, these two arms are not straight. Okay, these are unparalleled to each other at an angle of theta. Both are inclined at an angle of theta. Okay, again this length is 50 inches. Blends are equal 5 10 inches and 10 inches. I moved it again here, again here. Now measure this particular angle. Now you will be saying, let me just do it again. Just making the clearer diagram. Connect them together. Here the predefined angle is theta. Predefined angle is theta. Okay, now if I turn it, then what if I turn it to certain angle, say I brought it here, I brought it here, okay, earlier the angle is theta, now the angle is theta plus alpha, when I brought it here, then what will happen, then what will happen, it will be moving here and it will be moving here, it will also move by the same angle alpha, but the effective angle from the vertical, now see, from the vertical here, will become 10 of theta plus alpha. Here it will become 10 of theta minus alpha. Effective angle will change. For the inside, the angle is greater and for the outside, the angle is lesser. The vehicle is moving here. This is the inside tire. This is the outside tire. If I do it the opposite way, if I make something like this, here, something like this, then I will be calling it the, then what will happen, the outside is going to be greater and the inside angle is going to be lesser, just make your own permutation, okay, just do your own permutation, I do not want to get into very basics, okay, for that you can join my other series on vehicle dynamics, which will be starting from tomorrow, I will be discussing these things in detail, as of now I just need to move with the formula steering, uh, formula steering type of steering system, okay, just to give you the hint, I have taken up this particular topic, Okay, so this particular mechanism that I have just discussed is regarded as the Ackerman geometry. Ackerman says if the inside angle is equal to outside angle, 
we call it the parallel agreement. It's just the term, nothing more than that. Okay, if the inside angle is greater than outside angle, we call it agreement. And if the inside angle is lesser than outside angle, we call it anti agreement. What is the ideal condition? We have just seen this thing now. See, if my vehicle is turning like this, the inside angle should have to be greater in comparison to the outside angle. This is the ideal condition. This is what we want in any vehicle. This is anti agreement. And then you have got the parallel agreement. There are three kinds of agreement. There are three kinds of geometry, steering geometry. You just call it the agreement, nothing more than that. But agreement comes into relevance because he derives the formula on the basis of which turning radius can be calculated. So this is my vehicle. Ackerman said that during a corner, if you're taking this side corner, if you're taking this side corner, during the corner, now see, this is a straight. But at the time of corner, I will be making it like this. It will be going like this. Now, during the corner, what will happen, my dear friends? You can just see, you can just see here, if I take a vertical, if I take a normal along this particular point, if I take a normal along this particular point, these two points will be intersecting somewhere. These two points will be intersecting somewhere. Let me make a smaller diagram to explain this thing. straight I took this side turn theta outer theta inner okay if I did this thing now see what will happen I will be making a normal normal and when I make a normal these two points are going to intersect somewhere Ackerman said if these two normals intersect in the line of my rear axle in the line of the rear axle, then I will be calling it 100% decrement. If it is intersecting before that, it is going to be greater than 100% decrement. Sorry, uh, it is going to be lesser than 100% decrement. If it is intersecting away from it, it is going to be considered to be more than 100% decrement. Okay, so please remember this one thing. 100% decrement is not the ideal condition. Please remember this thing. It is just a reference point so that you could get to know how much it is steering how much your um, steering arms are inclined. Okay, just the reference point. Now in the steering system, you need to determine few of the points. First, we need to determine the turning radius. Then, you need to determine the speed at which you can take the corner without slipping. Then you need to determine under steer. You need to determine over steer. You need to determine neutral steer conditions in your vehicle. These are the few things that are needed to be determined in the vehicle. A speed at which the vehicle can take a corner without slipping. Hmm. Now without slipping, what do you mean by slipping? I will be explaining this thing. Slipping. Now, slipping as a hole for the vehicle and slipping for the tire are two different things. Slipping as a hole. So, if this is my vehicle moving forward, the intended direction of the vehicle is to move into this particular direction. The intended position at any time, I want my vehicle to move into this particular direction. At any point of time, I want my vehicle to move into this particular direction. I was not able to make a straight line anymore. now also. Okay, now see. Okay, but after a certain course of period, after a certain time, I found out my vehicle is not moving straight. It is actually deviating from its path to this particular direction. Okay, say for example, after 1 kilometer, after 10 kilometers, when I checked, I found out that my vehicle was actually supposed to move here. In this particular direction but after certain kilometers I found that it deviated to this particular length it is moving here it is moving here okay now this particular thing that you are seeing here my dear friends is regarded as the slip the slip could occur because of anything because of surface irregularities because of surface irregularities the vehicle shifted from its original track original path to other path that could be the possibility 
okay because of surface irregularities or maybe one of the tires having the lesser tire pressure because of which the tire shifted into that particular direction when the tire pressure is less or because of um, this thing because one at one position by the weight is more the sh the vehicle shifted towards that particular direction this is known as vehicle slip vehicle slip similarly in the case of our tires also we have seen certain slips certain slips so this is my tire this is the center of the tire originally what do you think you think the center contact patch of my tire tire will always be below the tire center contact patch this is what you will be considering but in actually we will be finding out at different conditions the contact patch here you will say this is the contact patch and this center will be, will be dividing it equally front and the rear will be dividing equally but it is not the case sometimes it will be moving here in the front view you can see it's not in the center again in the front view this is how my tire looks like it is not in the center it is either tilted right side it is either tilted left side because of which you will be finding out all these forces the movements that are being produced in my tire in my vehicle will be causing certain changes will be causing certain disturbances in the entire vehicle okay will be causing certain disturbances about which my tire will start tilting it's moving right it's moving left and hence it will be causing slipping hence it will cause the slip now there could be the longitudinal slip or there could be the lateral slip there could be longitudinal slip or there could be the lateral slip in the vehicle um, we will be discussing these things in detail in the vehicle dynamic series which is starting tomorrow okay but as of now just understand this thing slip when there is a deviation from the original path you call it the slip anything could be the reason but this is regarded as the slip generally in the case of tires the slip occurs because of the weight transfer and because of the change in traction in the right side left side tire in the front in the rear tires okay it happens because of that so you need to find out after certain speeds, slipping will occur. And when the slip occurs, it means your tire's direction is not under your control. When the slipping occurs, it means the tire's direction is not under your control. Okay, I hope you got this thing. Now, these are few parameters that are needed to be considered. How will you start defining it? How will you find out what turning radius is required? How will you define what turning radius is required? Now, many of the times we generally assume that I need the 5 meters of turning radius for my vehicle, 6 meters of turning radius for my vehicle. That's fine. But there should be certain parameters on the basis of which the turning radius is needed to be identified. And you need to particularly focus on all the iterations to get the exact turning radius in your vehicle, which will help you or which will help you achieve uh, the most uh, stable turning radius, the high speed turning radius in your vehicle. Okay. So this is my vehicle. I need to determine the turning radius. Now, see, this is the exact center of my vehicle. Exact center, okay? How I determined it? From this diagonal. Center contact point to center contact point. This is center of my vehicle. Okay. Now, see, <clears throat> I have determined that my uh, turning radius of my vehicle should have to be 3 meters. Should have to be 3 meters. I have just considered. I have got the target. The target turning radius, target turning radius for my vehicle is 3 meters okay to achieve this turning radius this is my tire earlier it was straight moving straight but now what will happen it needs to turn along what axis this particular axis joint okay now you can see the normal that I will be drawing the normal that I will draw the normal that I will draw is the inside angle is the outside angle outside inside to achieve this particular turning radius to achieve this particular turning radius the inside tire should have to turn this the outside tire should have to turn this but when i did this thing my dear friends what i have considered already i have considered this to be the pivot point this to be the pivot point about which my vehicle is turning Ackerman said the 100% Ackerman says that it that 
the pivot point about which the vehicle is turning is at the center contact is at the uh, sorry is at the rear axle is at the rear axis so if the 30 meters is turning radius you need to determine it like this this is the three meter from the center contact patch and this is the pivot point about which my vehicle is turning about which my vehicle is turning my dear friend this is not correct this is not correct but you need the base about which you need to start designing your vehicle and this is the base from the center you need to identify but this is not the pivot point about which my vehicle will turn and for that you need to calculate the side slip angle for front tire and side slip angle for rear tire now every time whenever you take a corner what happens see my front tires are turning but the rear tires are skidding in the opposite direction are not turning they are skidding in the opposite direction when they are skidding in the opposite direction see what is happening the front tires are moving here and the rear tires are moving here front tires here going forward and the rear tires are moving here but they are actually moving here it is moving like this now see both of them together will be making a certain offset both longitudinally and laterally both longitudinally and laterally this offset is needed to be determined and this offset is going to be affected by suspension travel and the torque or you can say traction availability at the front and at the rear traction availability at the front and at the rear please remember this one particular point please remember these points okay well just give me a moment as I have told you that this is a free certification program, I need to share the certification link with each one of you. I need to share the attendance link with each one of you. Any of you who is attending this particular lecture up till now, you people deserve a certificate. You people deserve a certificate of participation in this particular session. So I am now going to share. the attendance form link with each one of you okay in the chat box I will be sharing the particular link okay I have shared the attendance link with you in the chat box I want each one of you to please fill up the attendance sheet I want each one of you to please fill up the attendance sheet okay this sheet is going to remain open for five minutes till that time i want you people to please fill this particular attending sheet let's move forward let's try to complete this thing let's try to complete this thing fs formula student steering system design essential this is what we are discussing it is affected by the suspension travel torque traction the slip angle all these things contribute for the steering system design okay now Whenever we design the steering system, it's not just about if my tire is going to turn or my tire is going to yaw about the vertical axis. There are many parameters that are needed to be considered. And the entire steering system, when you design it, you need to first design it geometrically. And there are three geometrical parameters that are associated with the steering system design. First is camber. Second is caster. Third is Two. and the fourth one is the compensatory geometry that is the KPI kingpin inclination these are the four parameters these are the four geometrical parameters that affect how you steer a vehicle that affect the complete steering system of your vehicle I want to take the left side corner by 45 degree but my vehicle is only cornering by 30 degree I want my vehicle to turn with a radius of 5 meters but my vehicle is turning with a radius of 3 meters how is this thing happening? 
we are having few parameters that is oversteer understeer and neutral steer what is oversteer when i want the input to be 5 meters i want my turning radius to be 5 meters but my vehicle cornered by 3 meters lesser than that it is the oversteer oversteer i want the input i i have provided the input for 5 meters of turning radius I want my vehicle to turn by 5 meters, to corner by 5 meters. But my vehicle cornered by 7 meters. Lesser than what I expected. Greater than what I expected, sorry. Then it is regarded as the under steer. Neutral steer is that if my vehicle is cornering by 5 meters, I provided the input for it and it actually cornered by 5 meters. The neutral steer, say for example, on a straight highway, if I am moving my vehicle at a constant speed, I provided an input of 45 degrees, say 40 degrees. When I provide the input of 40 degrees, my vehicle actually corners by, my tire is cornering, turning, yawing by 40 degrees, my vehicle corners by 5 meters. Fine. Tick. Now I am taking the same vehicle over an uphill. I am taking the same vehicle over an uphill. Over an uphill. My tire is turned by 40 degrees. But the turning radius that I received is 3 meters. Over the uphill plane. Now I am taking my vehicle downhill. My tire turned by 40 degrees. But the turning radius of my vehicle is 7.5 meters. In the downhill, I am having the understeer tendency. In the uphill, I am having the oversteer tendency. In the planar road, I am having I am having the neutral steer tendency. Now, another example. I am driving my vehicle at a constant speed. My tire turned by 45, 40 degree. And I am having 5 meters of turning radius. I call it the neutral steer. Now I am accelerating. The weight is transferring from the front axle to the rear axle. I am accelerating. My vehicle, my tire turned by 40 degree. But my vehicle is turning by 3.5 meters. I call it oversteer. I am decelerating. I have applied the brake. The weight, weight the tire turned by 40 degree. Vehicle turned by 7.5 meters. I call it the understeer tendency. From each of these things, see from this and from this, what you cited. You cited that the weight transfer from the front axle to the rear axle, my vehicle is having the oversteer tendency. When the weight transfers from the front axle to the rear axle, it means when the rear tire is having more weight, then the front, there is the oversteer tendency in the vehicle. Or when the front tire is having more weight in comparison to the rear, it is having the new, sorry, I'm really sorry, it is having the understeer tendency. Why? This is not the basic rule. But because the weight transfer happens, it is highly high possibility that you will be oversteering or you will be understeering. Why it happens? Because the weight transfer or this weight, what happens in the weight? See, this is the road, this is the tire. The normal reaction here is the weight. Weight, WR or WF. WF for the front tire. Okay. But the force that is regulating the entire motion is this is this traction force, mu into WF. Either in the longitudinal direction or in the lateral direction. Either in the longitudinal direction or in the lateral direction. I do not care. Okay. But in any of these cases, if the weight transfer occurs, this traction force will also change. If the traction force is changing, if the traction force will change, your stability is also going to be affected. Okay, your control over the vehicle will also change. This understeer, oversteer, everything in your vehicle is also dependent on geometry. And for this geometry, you have got four things. Three are primary, camber, caster, KPI and tow. Where KPI, sorry, tow is considered as the compensatory geometry. Not KPI, sorry, not KPI, tow is considered as the KPI. Un, um, compensated geometry. Now see, if I look up to my vehicle from front, this is how my tires will look like. 
if my tires are tilted inside word like this okay tires are tilted inside word i call it the camber in i call it the camber in or negative camber if they are tilted outside you call it positive camber Now, in the case of auto rickshaws, you must have noticed this thing: the rear, their rear tires, the rear tires. If nobody is seated in the auto rickshaw, the rear tires are actually tilted outside word. Okay, but when you are seated, they come back to its original position. If the tires are tilted, it means it means the contact patch of the tire with the ground is also less. Okay, it is also impacting. This is camber. Camber is the front view geometry. Okay, front view geometry very essential for steering, very essential for braking, very essential for transmission, very essential for braking. Camber is the most important geometry in your vehicle. Then, second is the caster. Have you ever noticed that when you drive a bicycle, when you drive a, when you ride a bicycle, when you ride a bike, have you ever noticed this thing that your handle is always tilted forward? That particular angle is known as caster angle. Okay, from the side view. if i look up to my vehicle i found out that my steering is tilted in the front wheel direction this particular inclination from the vertical see from the vertical to this particular point it is known as caster angle if it is tilted in the opposite direction i will be calling it negative caster here i will be calling it positive caster so every vehicle that you look up into the world you will find out all these vehicles are having positive caster bell positive caster bell If you look up into tractors, you must find out that the tires are tilted somewhat inside wheel, like this. From the top view, look up. We call it toe. Yes, sir. Front view, side view, and this is top view. Toe tires are tilted inside wheel. If they are tilted inside wheel, both these tires are tilted inside wheel. We call it toe in. If both are tilted outside word, we call it toe out. If anything happens wrong with the front uh, with the front view geometry or the side view geometry, toe actually adjusts it. How it adjusts it, we will be discussing this thing in the next session. When you have got a bit of clarity about the suspension, I will be digging deeper into steering system as well. In the next session, I will be explaining this thing. And the fourth is the KPI. KPI is again the front view geometry. But what happens in the front view geometry? If I look up to my steering axis, my tire is not tilted, but my steering axis is tilted in the front view. Then I call it the KPI. Now see, in the front view, the tire center contact patch to this particular distance is known as cam. The tire center contact patch to this particular tilt is regarded as the camber tilt. Important to measure the turning force, cornering force. Okay, steering effort. Important to measure the steering effort. Here is the sideways. This is known as caster tail. Again, important to measure the turning force, the uh, steering effort. And here in the top top view, you cannot find it. Okay, but in the KPI, you can see this particular distance is regarded as the mechanical tail. So, if someone asks you how much torque is required to turn the wheel. To to move the vehicle, to to corner the vehicle. How will you calculate it? I'm just giving a bit of hint. This is not complete, but just to sum up the entire session, how will you do this thing? This is my tire forward. Ah, uh, let me just remove it. Okay, this is too okay. KPI again a front view geometry where tire is not tilted, but the steering axis is tilted, and this distance is known as the mechanical tail. Now see, in my vehicle, if I talk about this is the front tire, front view, 
and my tire is needed to be tilted along this particular axis. This is the steering axis. This is a tire center contact where the complete force is assumed. How can I tilt? How can I rotate my tire, my dear friends? How can I rotate my tire? You will be saying I need to apply certain force. I need to apply certain force, and I need to rotate it. I need to rotate it. Now see, this is the distance, the steering distance. Okay, the steering axis distance from the tire center contact. How much torque is required? How much force is required? How much torque is required to turn it? Now, it's not the force, it's the torque because I am rotating it, not forcing it, I am rotating it. How much torque is required to rotate it, my dear friends, to turn it, my dear friends? I will be saying the, the reaction force here is mu into Wf multiplied by this particular distance because this is where the torque is being applied. This R is the torque required to turn my wheel along this particular axis to turn my wheel along this particular axis torque required so greater this distance r greater is the torque that is required greater is the torque higher is the susceptibility to make changes in your steering it means greater is the control over steering i won't say that increase this force unnecessarily so that you cannot turn your vehicle with the bare hands don't do this thing but at least you should have to have sufficient value so that you can control the motion of Okay, please remember this one particular point. This is how the entire string system is needed to be taken up, is needed to be targeted. I am not completing it now. In the next session, I will be completing the entire string system along with the suspension system. There are a few of the points that are associated along with the suspension system as well. I would ask you people if you have, I would request you people if you have not followed, uh, if you have not subscribed to this particular YouTube channel, please subscribe it. If you have not followed us, please follow us on our Instagram or on all the social media. Uh, platforms okay i will be completing up the remaining segment in the next session in the next sunday's session so thank you so much everyone for joining in thank you so much everyone this is the time for me to sign off from this particular session i've got the other commitments to complete and i need to go for that so thank you so much everyone for trusting us and joining up this particular session please share this particular link with all of your friends so that we can reach out to more people with our content thank you